What? What are you, comedian? Ma, I can't talk. I'm on a stakeout. Uh, Ray? Benny, Benny, you gotta get down here right away. The bears are finally kicking some butt. Ray, I need your help with something. I'm having a bit of a problem getting a license for Diefenbaker. And I'm not sure if it's because he's a wolf or just because he's deaf. Yes! Yes! Then you think you can help me? What? With a license. Of course, I, I wouldn't want you to use your influence on Dooley. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Just leave it to me. Okay. Now, this man's family have been prominent in the brewing business. Michael Arthur Bass, later the first Lord Burton, paid for the construction of three local churches. This was the last of the three to be built, St. Chad's, where we've come tonight to hear the people of Burton sing their selection of songs of praise. fine east window here in St. Chad's, you can see St. Modwin, a 7th century abbess who built a chapel here on an island in the Trent. She holds a model of Burton Abbey, which was later built on the banks of the river opposite St. Modwin's Island. In the centre of the window stands St. Chad, who for the last three years of his life was bishop of nearby Litchfield. According to the Venerable Bede, St. Chad administered his diocese in great holiness of life, and that quality of holiness is the theme of the hymn, Blessed are the pure in heart.
Peter Kamak is a scientist with the National Coal Board. He's in charge of coordinating new ideas for the preparation of coal for the market. Well, my job is, is motivation of people in, in the division here at Bretby. Right, so if you can start the series, Trevor. Not all our work is fruitful and successful, and the problem comes when the development comes up against a brick wall. So it's to try and encourage them to direct another line of research, uh, hoping to lead to a successful development. We try to give each of our engineers an individual project which he works with from beginning to end, from conception of the idea through to testing of a prototype and then exploitation of a fully commercial production size unit. We program using the No one person can have full knowledge of everything. I regard the whole of the division as a family just as the, the church is a family, one's home as a family and we rely equally on the, the fitters and the fitters mates who build the equipment just as the engineers who design it and have the ideas. My own family is very much of a team. All my boys are servers, including myself, and we can just about complete a full serving team. Not quite, we're, I think we're one short. We have many hymns we like, but we think we've had many privileges and graces in our life and we've chosen the hymn, O Praise Ye the Lord, because we think Somewhere in there you'll find that it does have a, a line or two saying that it is a hymn of thanks and a hymn of praise. And this is our, this is our view. Life, Beryl Poynton has been a dedicated voluntary worker in the local community. She loves singing hymns and she's worn out two Methodist hymn books. Mrs Poynton, how on earth do you manage to wear out a hymn book? Well, probably because I use them such a lot. Um, most days, you know, I sort of look at the hymn book, uh, use it in meditation, use it um, as, pr you know, use some of the hymns as prayers. Um, and very often I like to, to learn a new hymn. And so, of course, I, I pick the hymn book up and so I, I'm always using them, really, and they're thumbed a lot, and I suppose that's the reason they get worn out. Now, you say you see a hymn as a prayer. Do you think a hymn has a special role in worship? Oh, yes. Um, a hymn really is a song of praise of God. And 
we go to worship to praise God. And so I think hymns should be sung lustily and, and very well. What's been your choice of hymn and why? Well, I've chosen uh, a hymn 745 from the Methodist hymn book, All Praise to Our Redeeming Lord, Who Joins Us By His Grace. This is the hymn that was sung on our wedding day when we were young. My husband and I um, sort of made a vow that we would um, try and live a Christian life and bring up any children, um, you know, that we might have in a Christian home. And so this hymn really um, has come down with me through the years especially in the second verse. Um, to our high callings, glorious hope, we hand in hand go on. So this is really at the commencement of our married life. Peter Haynes is a lorry driver for one of the breweries here, and this year he becomes mayor of Burton. For five years he's been on the council housing committee. Peter, is your work in housing important to you? Yes, it is, because um, housing is a basic need. If a family hasn't got uh, a permanent home, then of course their, their, their roots aren't really settled. Do you actually like taking decisions involving people? Oh, yes. Yes, it's very important that uh, somebody's got to make decisions, and I like to think that I'm one of those people. But uh, do you actually enjoy taking these decisions on your own? Well, not always, no. They're a bit... Um, you, you, you come up with some uh, a de a decision that's got to be made that is very important, not only you, but to also other people. And um, this is where I turn to God and, and prayer. Many a time I've had um, answers uh, and multiple of answers to one question and through talking to God perhaps it can be anywhere at all and um, it can be in my own living room for instance when I'm on my own reading through my notes that I have to do before I go to a council meeting or to a council committee meeting. So you don't have any set time and routine for prayer then? No, I just relax, close my eyes and just talk to God and this you can do anywhere because he is everywhere.
years ago, Aileen O'Shea became the youngest ever mayoress of Burton when her father became mayor and her mother preferred to stay out of the public eye. Aileen, what did you actually have to do as mayoress? All sorts of things, really. We had to uh, attend coffee evenings, um, open bazaars. We attended quite a number of functions at um, the civic heads uh, from surrounding areas and uh, present awards, judge fancy dress competitions, um, a whole variety of things, really. Do you think you emerged as a different kind of person after your year in office? Yes, I, I think I became more of a listener um, than I had been, although I can still <laughs> talk a great deal. But uh, I think um, one had to do a lot of listening during um, one's offices and... Uh, and that's, that was the difference for me. It certainly um, taught me that, uh, that everyone has their own opinion and it's got to be listened to just the same as yours has when you're talking to anyone else. Now, what hymn have you chosen and why? Um, well, I've chosen All People That On Earth Do Dwell. It's uh, a hymn that um, has really stuck in my memory since I was at school. I was in the choir, the first year I was in the school choir, and we sang it. But it wasn't just a choir piece, it was sung by the whole school. And it seemed to be sung with a great deal of conviction. And I think the words are relatively simple and can be done so, they can be sung with conviction. For 25 years, Muriel Brown has worked in a brewery canteen. Now she's the manageress. There's 18 girls and one trainee, and then myself mates 20. To deal with all those women, to start with, you've got to be sort of fair, and they know then that 
they've got to be fair. And then you see you get all the men, you get their grumbles and grouses and perhaps one of the women upset them and you've got to sort all that out. You see, we open at six in the morning till half past six at night. Although I'm not here all the time, I'm responsible for everything that goes on. It's five day week and Saturday morning. I pretty well do everything. I do all the ordering, the, all the wages, pay as you earn, stock taking, see that they do the cooking right and supervising it, that it goes out right and that the men are satisfied. It's exhausting sometimes, it's very exhausting, especially when there's everything to do. I always read the Bible first thing in the morning. Always have done for as long as I can remember. You're sort of meditating and you're doing it by yourself. I think I get the strength of the quietness, sitting quiet from reading the Bible. I have chosen the hymn, Oh Jesus I Have Promised, because it was the hymn that I had when I was confirmed on December the 10th, 1935, where I promised to follow Christ, and um, I hope I've tried to do that all my life. Another brewery worker here is Philip Farron, who's been in the industry for 24 years. Now, as a welfare manager, part of his job is to organize monthly meetings for retired employees. The retired employees take up quite a deal of my time. I have some 900, in fact, under my care, and I'm available to them should they have any problems. They'll come to me with simple problems sometimes well simple to me that is they can be rather put out by a letter or a circular that they don't understand 
I find the job very satisfying. People, especially after a bereavement, need some help. Even well-meaning relatives aren't always the best people to advise them on these occasions. I have to be sure there's someone looking after their interests, especially people where there's no family. So St John's is your parish, so that's the church I go to. I often wish sometimes, especially when work gets rather hectic, that I could spare the time to go on perhaps a weekend retreat. I have been on these retreats and they've always been very refreshing. And if one could do this, perhaps on a six monthly basis, I'm sure it would be tremendous strengthening of the spirit. I don't find prayer an easy undertaking. I have perhaps underestimate, I'm sure I do underestimate the power of prayer and the usefulness. It seems that I only seem to concentrate on prayer when all else fails, which is a, a mistake on my part. The hymn I've chosen is Just As I Am Without One Plea. It brings us down to earth, whatever we are, whether we've just had promotion, whether you've been elected to be a shop steward, whether you've just been very successful, you're still the same person, basically. And I think this hymn rather emphasises that fact and our dependence on God. Living God, we sing your praise. With our lips and in our lives. Creator God, the world is yours. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Father God, we are your children. Forgive us our faults and meet our needs. Jesus our Lord, be present among us. Help us to build the world of your love. Spirit of God, source of all power. Guide us and make us strong in your service. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and with those whom you love, now and always. Amen.